हेलो स्टूडेंट्स टॉपिक फॉर टुडे इज विस्कॉसिटी विस्कॉसिटी ऑफ फ्लूड्स जैसे कि आपको पता है फ्लूड्स में लिक्विड्स और गैसेस दोनों आते हैं सो so, विस्कॉसिटी भी जो है लिक्विड्स की भी होती है और गैसेस की भी होती है विस्कॉसिटी क्या है विस्कॉसिटी जो प्रॉपर्टी है ड्यू टू दैट एन इंटरनल फ्रिक्शन अपोजेज रिलेटिव मोशन इन फ्लूड्स ड्यूरिंग फ्लो जब हमने फ्लूड मैकेनिक्स पढ़ी थी तो हमने बर्नोली थ्योरम के डेरिवेशन में नॉन विस्कस फ्लूड्स की असम्पन किया था नॉन विस्कस फ्लूड का मतलब होता है जिसमें किसी तरह का इंटरनल फ्रिक्शन फ्लो में ना हो अब हम जो है विस्कॉसिटी की बात करने वाले हैं जिसमें कि फ्लूड्स जब फ्लो होते हैं तो एक इंटरनल फ्रिक्शन जो है लेयर्स के बीच में रिलेटिव मोशन को अपोज करता है इसको थोड़ा आसान सिचुएशन में आपको समझाऊं तो जैसे किसी वेसल में कोई लिक्विड भरा हुआ है फॉर एग्जांपल मिल्क है तो आप स्टिर करते हो तो क्या ऑब्जर्व करते हो आफ्टर सम टाइम द लिक्विड कम्स टू रेस्ट ये वैसी ही बात है जैसे कि हम सॉलिड सरफेसेस में फ्रिक्शन को देखते हैं और उसकी वजह से कोई भी ब्लॉक को हम पुश करें रफ सरफेस पे तो क्या होगा वैन इट इज लेफ्ट टू इट सेल्फ द फ्रिक्शन विल अपोज रिलेटिव मोशन एंड ब्लॉक विल कम टू रेस्ट सो एज देर इज फ्रिक्शन यू हैव सीन इन मैकेनिक्स बिटवीन सॉलिड सर्फेसेज वेन दे आर रफ सिमिलरली देर एग्जिस्ट अ फ्रिक्शन इन फ्लूड्स लिक्विड्स एज वेल एज गैसेज विच सर्व टू अपोज रिलेटिव मोशन बिटवीन लेयर्स ड्यूरिंग फ्लो दिस इज एन इम्पॉर्टेंट प्रॉपर्टी बिकॉज in engineering application during design of fluid flow systems we need to take viscosity into account so its application could be in industries in design of uh, pipe and the pressure at which fluid flow must occur to get a certain discharge and also it has application even in diverse field like uh, human physiology jaise ki heart mein jo hai aap jante ho ki blood flow ke andar jo hai clotting ka wajah se heart pe arteries mein pressure increase ho jata hai and that leads to heart attacks so proper study of viscosity is important application in engineering as well as medicine so what we will do is first we will see the cause of viscosity why viscosity arises so viscosity arises due to intermolecular attractions as the property of surface tension is also due to that before going on to uh, different behavior of liquids and gases so far as viscosity is concerned we'll first see how viscosity of different fluids are measured what is the formula for viscosity so again here newton actually was the pioneer in formulating a relation for study of 
viscosity of different fluids. So Newton actually did the pioneering study and he came out with a formula which we now know as Newton's law. And the fluids which obey this law are called Newtonian fluids. So let's talk about Newton's formula. You may write down the definition of viscosity. I am repeating again. Property of fluids due to which an internal friction opposes relative motion between layers during their flow. Internal friction between layers whose relative motion so that is viscosity one important thing that we must keep in mind is when fluid flow occurs in a channel let's say in a pipe or in any uh, confinement. Let's take a case of a pipe. So when we consider a liquid flowing in a pipe, what happens is the layer of liquid which is in contact with wall or a solid surface wall of pipe in this case, that does not have any relative motion relative to the surface it is in contact with. For example, here in this case, if the pipe is stationary and the liquid flow occurs, then due to viscosity what will happen? The outermost layer of liquid will be at rest because the pipe is at rest. Now the relative motion does not take place because of forces of adhesion. We talked about this cohesion and forces of adhesion in surface tension. Adhesion refer to forces between molecules of different substance. The attraction forces between molecules of different substance are called as forces of adhesion. So the molecules of the liquid in contact with solid because of forces of adhesion stick and because of that the outermost layer in contact with the wall in the case of five let's say will not move and while the flow occurs the inner layers will move faster and outer layers are going to be moving slower and the layer in contact with the wall will be at rest. So this will give rise to a velocity gradient means the different layers of the liquid will be moving with different velocity. So why velocity gradient arises? The velocity gradient which is different layers of liquid move at different velocity, that velocity gradient arises because as we see here in this case the force of adhesion does not allow the layer which is in contact to have any relative motion. If I take another example, let us take the case of a glass plate. 
and consider a viscous layer of viscous liquid between glass plate and the horizontal floor then this layer of viscous liquid will not allow glass plate to move freely if you try to pull it in order to pull this glass plate you will have to exert a force because the layer of liquid in contact with the glass plate will move with velocity v because of force of adhesion no relative motion and the lowermost layer of liquid in contact with the horizontal floor will be at rest so there is going to be a velocity gradient and newton came out with a relation between velocity gradient and the strength of friction force between layers larger the velocity gradient change in velocity per unit distance that is gradient so the newton's formula is force per unit area that is proportional to velocity gradient how is it measured how is the velocity gradient measured it is measured perpendicular to the fluid flow for example if this gap is d for its small value we can write velocity gradient as v by d because the upper layer will move at a velocity v and the lowermost layer will be stationary so what is the change in velocity in distance d v is the change in velocity 0 to v and divided by the distance what is the distance over which this velocity change occurs d so this velocity gradient in this case will be v by d so what newton's formula for viscosity is the force per unit area due to viscosity is proportional to velocity gradient so here in this case the different layers will have the force per unit area opposing their relative motion given by this expression the direction of this force is tangential tangential force per unit area so the layers between the glass plate and the horizontal floor will have internal friction in tangential direction per unit area which will be proportional to the velocity gradient v by d in this case and this introduces a quantity called viscosity coefficient which is property of the liquid in this case or fluid in general we represent that coefficient as by symbol greek symbol eta so this is coefficient of viscosity eta is the symbol we use for that we must know its unit unit in which viscosity is written different fluids have different viscosity it depends on temperature also so unit of eta from here this formula only we can find the unit of eta this will be in meter per second this will be in meter 
this will be a meter square, this will be a newton. So, from these units, we can write unit of eta. SI unit will be Newton second per meter square. So, this is SI unit which is also called by name usually. The SI name of unit of viscosity is also Poiseuille. We will later see Poiseuille's formula also. But SI unit of viscosity is also called Poiseuille. But more common unit of viscosity is its CGS unit. CGS unit is called poise and we can find the conversion factor between poise and poiseuille. You can try it and you can get the relation 1 poise is equal to 0 0.1 poiseuille. So, you can try that out, units and dimension, you have studied how we can convert unit from one system to other. So, this you must know if values are given in CGS unit, then you must convert its value in SI and then do the calculations. For example, the viscosity of water. The viscosity of water is written in centipoise and eta water is equal to 1 Cp. Cp is for centipoise. Yes, a centimeter hota hai, vese centipoise hota hai. So, 1 centipoise is 10 to the power minus 2 poise. Yes, a water cube density hoti hai 1 gram per centimeter cube. Vese hi aapko water ki viscosity bhi yaad karna chao to bada asaan hai. It is 1 Cp, 1 centipoise. So, this is more common unit practically centipoise mein likhi jati hai kai baar liquids ki viscosity. तो ये हुई बात न्यूट्रन के फॉर्मूले की जिसमें हमने देखा कि विस्कोसिटी कैसे नापी जाती है जब विस्कस लिक्विड फ्लो हो रहा होता है तो हम रिलेटिव मोशन जो लेयर्स के बीच में होता है उसको देखते हुए वेलोसिटी ग्रेडिएंट लिखते हैं परपेंडिकुलर टू फ्लो और उस वेलोसिटी ग्रेडिएंट पे डिपेंड करता है कि लेयर्स के बीच में opposing friction force kitna hoga jo unke relative motion ko oppose kare to per unit area that force is written as ft by a is equal to eta db by dz so this is important and we will see by taking example for example in this case if we want to know how much force is needed to pull this plate at a constant velocity. So, how much force is needed? F external, if plate area is A, then the force of viscosity that is going to oppose will be eta V by D. F by A is equal to eta V by D. So, F will be eta A V by D. In this simple case, you can say the force that is required to pull this plate at a constant velocity will be given by eta a v by t. But 
let's take another example. Suppose we have a cylindrical pipe of length L, radius R, which is fixed and inside it there is this is out this is a hollow cylinder and there is shaft inside it there is a gap d which is much much smaller than r So, the radius of the shaft will be r minus d. In this gap, there is a viscous liquid. What we do is, we imagine that this shaft is rotated at certain angular velocity omega. And we want to find the torque which is required to keep this shaft rotating inside this hollow fixed cylinder at a constant angular velocity omega to find the external. What external torque is required? So, first of all, we see why the torque is needed at all at a constant angular velocity. Normally, if a body is free to rotate, there would not be any torque required. But here in this case, its rotation will not be free. Why will its rotation not be free? Because of the presence of viscous liquid. The liquid is filled in this gap and the outer cylinder, hollow cylinder is fixed. So, the layer in contact with that outer cylinder is going to be at rest and the layer of liquid in contact with the shaft will have a velocity nearly omega r. I have already considered d here much much further r. So, the velocity will be nearly omega r, tangential velocity. Now, there is going to be velocity gradient because the layer here will have a velocity omega r and the layer here will be at rest. So, what will be the velocity gradient perpendicular to flow omega r by D. That will be the velocity gradient and this velocity gradient is going to develop a force opposite to omega and that force will cause a torque have a moment arm r. So, torque will be force multiplied by r, moment r and force we can write as eta area will be 2 pi r l and what will dv by dz will be omega r by d and there is another r for moment r. So, this will be the torque that external agent need to apply in order to overcome the torque due to friction that this viscous liquid is going to exert on the rotating shaft. 
So the viscous liquid is going to exert this friction force F and accordingly the external torque need to be this much. This is also a relatively simple problem. There is a good problem in Erodo. I tell you the number of that. Try 1.331 of Erodo. You can pause the video and try this problem of the Erodo. Then Once you have tried that, you can continue with the video. I will show you how to solve that problem. So let us talk about Erodo problem. You must have tried. What was asked in that is the power that torque external by external agent is going to generate in order to rotate this disk at a constant angular velocity omega. This disk of radius r is inside a vessel which is having viscous liquid inside it and there is a gap of height h as a clearance between top and bottom faces of the disk and the vessel. So this gap of height h is containing a viscous liquid and when we try to rotate this disc and the vessel outside vessel is fixed, you can imagine that there is going to be relative motion between layers of viscous liquid which will not be uniform as you go outside. As a function of small r, the points of the disc will have a velocity omega small r and that is omega small r divided by h will be the velocity gradient. For this you have to imagine that all points of the viscous liquid are going to be at rest which are in contact with the vessel. This is vessel and this is disc. So the points of the vessel are at rest and the points of the disc which is rotating will have a velocity omega small r. So the velocity gradient will not be constant, velocity gradient near the axis is going to be small and velocity gradient as you go outwards is going to increase. And because the velocity gradient is not uniform, we have to think of varying forces because this disk must be imagined as made up of element of rings and those rings as radius increases will have different force acting elements of rings. So in order to find torque you should be ready to visualize that calculus is needed df into r. We can calculate the torque. 
by integration and setting the limits r varying from 0 to capital R. df will be by Newton's formula eta into area area of this element of ring divided by sorry multiplied by velocity gradient so we can take constants out and So, power that we want to calculate will be written as tau into omega. Let me check up whether we have got the answer right or not. We have missed a factor of 2 because there is the same force which was acting above, same is going to act at the lower surface also. So, there must be a factor of 2 here and we will have this is the answer pi eta omega square r key power 4 upon h. So, that is a solution for this erodo problem. The mistake I did was this factor of 2. This factor of 2 is needed because viscous liquid is going to exert force on upper as well as lower surface of the disk. So, this is the solution for Erodo problem. I will explain you again what we have done. We wanted to find power that torque of external agent is going to develop in order to rotate this disk at a constant angular velocity omega. And why the torque was needed? Because viscous liquid is going to exert a force due to velocity gradient. Why is use of calculus required in this case? Use of calculus is required because velocity gradient will be different as you go outwards along the disk. Different points will have a different tangential velocity omega into small r. So, the different ring elements will experience different force. So, total torque will require integration varying element from 0 to capital R. And after torque, the power that we write, power developed by a torque, we write that as tau into omega. So, this is power developed by external torque. So, this is so far as use of Newton's formula is concerned. After this we go on to 
another application of Newton's formula in Poiseuille's law. So, Poiseuille's formula kya hota hai? We will see.